Welcome to today's session on uh, top use cases for SAP HANA Cloud. I'm Matt Zenas. Um, I run our SAP Global HANA and Database Solution Strategy Team. So uh, this is a topic around HANA and specifically HANA in the cloud, very familiar with, very passionate about. You don't necessarily have to be a HANA customer or use HANA, I think, to get a lot of this discussion because we'll be talking about basically the journey of HANA and where we began, where we're going, and, and the next chapter, which is uh, SAP HANA Cloud. The agenda today, uh, I'm going to be talking about a couple things, trends and challenges that we're seeing with our customers and in the market from a database and data management perspective, which I think will probably resonate with many of you. Um, we'll also take this time to introduce SAP HANA Cloud, which was first introduced at this past Sapphire by, by Hasso and, and Garrett Kazmaier on stage. So we're gonna spend some time today demystifying what those pieces are, how they all fit together. And then get into what I'll call the, the cloud use cases and patterns. Um, I wanna to try to make it, and hopefully we'll make it as concise, relevant, and meaningful as possible as you can, how you can leverage the capabilities, the native capabilities, and the differentiated capabilities of SAP HANA Cloud. And then what's next? How can you get started on your journey to the cloud? A uh, quick disclaimer, we are gonna be actually talking about products and features and capabilities uh, that are not yet released. So just as a general disclaimer, um, you know, these, these timings and capabilities can change uh, you know, without warning, so something to be aware of. So first of all, and I would think that everyone recognizes this, well, what are some of the trends that we're seeing in, in the market? I mean, first of all, there's an explosion of data. I think IDC does an analysis on the total global data footprint. You know, when HANA first launched back in 2010, almost 10 years ago, I think they calculated it around two zettabytes, a zettabyte being a thousand exabytes of total data created Fast forward to now, it says here 33 zettabytes, but actually in 2019, it's estimated to be 40 zettabytes. And they're expecting by 2025, 175 zettabytes of total data. And the reason for this, and a lot of it is that there's new data sources. There's new data sources that are popping up all the time. You know, we're seeing data sources now that we were not anticipating just a several years ago. And we have to anticipate also in the future, new data sources that we're not thinking about. And the reason is that there's a lot of connected data, everything is connected. And also data is creating data. Applications are creating data, and this is adding to this data explosion. Also, there's new demands on the data. You know, it's simply not good enough to ask anymore, well, what happened last quarter, or what happened last week, or even like what's happening right now. People wanna know, the business wants to know, well, what is going to happen using machine learning and predictive and embedding that and, and driving that into business processes. Also, we're in the world of cloud, and uh, I'm gonna be spending some time today with, a, with, I think, a very balanced approach in terms of explaining that we have a recognition that many of you are starting from an on-premises environment, and that it's not necessarily you're gonna be up and just move, moving everything. It's more of an extend, it's more of a journey, and we'll talk about how that is and how we can support that. But ultimately, cloud, what we're seeing is by about 2022 will be a major inflection point, certainly in the database market, where we expect cloud subscriptions to overcome on-premise database software revenue. And all the research shows this in terms of most of the IT-based spending will be around cloud or as a service going forward. And of course, these trends create challenges. And, and in any organization, when you look at kind of the the two main user groups, you have the business, right? Business users wanna have a connected data. They wanna know that their data is intelligent, connected, it's governed. They wanna make sure that the data that they're using is reliable, they can, make, they can make key decisions off of it. But to support them, technology or IT needs the flexibility to be able to, to create and deploy these flexible solutions. They need the ability to spin up cloud instances and create a, create a custom app or an innovative solution. They also need the ability to uh, do this unencumbered and do this at the speed of business. The reality is, is that because of this flexibility, a lot of times this causes complexity. You know, when we talk to our customers and the poll, many of them, you know, many of them have between six and eight different cloud instances. 
that they're having to deal with, right? This causes complexity. Some customers, because of data being spread out everywhere, both on-premises and the cloud, lose sight of you know, who their customer is. Even some lose sight of even what their own products are. Many have a strategy of moving things to the, crowd, to the cloud because of the cloud economics. But the reality is this is being offset by a lot of incumbent things like on-premise data centers, large amounts of data that are isolated in different places, isolated data, both geographically and in systems, sometimes locked there because of legacy investments and decisions, complex infrastructures, and data compliance. And that is actually the data compliance is a, uh, a really interesting one. I mean, besides GDPR, you know, when talking to analysts and regulators, because of this da data fragmentation, a big issue is actually understanding data lineage. Where did the data come from? What used to be for, used to be a concern of like financial services and insurance companies in terms of understanding people being written for insurance and things like that and why they may have been declined or even loans. Uh, this is now permeating in all kinds of different industries where regulators are wanting to know when you're making a decision, whether that's a financial decision or whatever, having an understanding of where did that data come from? Who created it? Who touched it? What, what's it, what is its lineage throughout the process? And as from a, on a scale from one to 10, our analysts and, and, um, and uh, analysts and auditors are telling us on a scale from one to 10, that's about a 14 in terms of importance. So absolutely significant challenges uh, for today's organization. But ultimately, I mean, what we're seeing is certainly on the, in the aspect of cloud and, and customers moving to the cloud in these heterogeneous uh, environments, is that the, the line between cloud, on-premise, and hybrid is, is absolutely blurring. Now, the general approach to the cloud has been, looks something like this, is a, a very sim simple, simplified view of it. But the idea is you have, of course, you're, you're starting with your on-premises, maybe running business suite information, your transactional system of record, and then the ability to then spin up a custom web application that's connected to that um, on a web service, um, on a public cloud provider, and then also then connecting to data lakes like AWS or even Hadoop systems that may be out there. And of course, the, the concerns are well, how do you set these up? How do you connect? What's the performance look like? How do you, how do you ensure um, secure access? So we're going to be talking a bit about this today. It's from some of what I'll call the patterns of leveraging HANA Cloud and addressing some of these questions and concerns. Um, and, and again, it goes without note here, is that 74% um, of enterprises describe their strategy as hybrid. Like I mentioned before, we understand that most organizations have between six and eight different cloud environments and are running on the various hyperscalers. In fact, usually when we ask, it's uh, you're talking about Azure and AWS and Google. Um, and so they definitely have a multi-cloud strategy. So first of all, before we get into the patterns, I want to take this time to talk about SAP HANA Cloud. Uh, again, this was announced at, um, at Sapphire. And to understand and put everything in perspective about all the data challenges and the data management aspects that I talked about, SAP's data management strategy is, is very clear. It's to make data a strategic asset within an organization, right? To basically fulfill the value chain of data from, from technology to people, from business facts to ideas, ultimately driving intelligent systems to make more intelligent and better decisions. Ultimately, to provide the foundation for the intelligent enterprise. And that, that's, that is the strategy for SAP going forward in addressing data management in, in the context of the intelligent enterprise. And when we talk about the intelligent enterprise, there's three main parts to it. The first is, of course, operational data. You probably heard the X and O, operational uh, data and the experience data. Of course, the operational data being your strong business processes and line of business applications to drive your customer systems, your suppliers, your networks, your, your employees, and managing employees and things along those lines with a core very strong digital core or ERP. And then also you have your experience data, like with Qualtrics, understanding um, your brands, your people, your, your market, your products, et cetera, and bringing those things together. And of course, the goal of the intelligent enterprise, there's kind of a couple key facets. The first is, is um, employee empowerment, 
is leveraging this information to em em engage your employees, empower them. In other words, take away non-value added tasks and automate them. It also means having meaningful customer engagements instead of just talking about um, you know, having a, a reactionary a response to customers, actually having a meaningful relationship. First of all, understanding who your customer is, anticipating their needs and addressing it. And the third piece is actually creating new revenue streams with the intelligent enterprise using this operational and experience data. And of course, at the heart of this and at the heart of the, the uh, data management strategy is the business technology platform, which is comprised of intelligent technologies, uh, like robotic process automation, artificial intelligence, application development and integration, being able to integrate with other applications like with APIs, automate and enhance and extend business processes, analytics and embedded analytics really around augmented BI, asking questions that you really wouldn't think of asking, as well as collaborative planning across the entire enterprise. And of course, what we'll be talking about today is more of the database and data management aspect. You need a strong digital foundation, a strong core, in this case, SAP HANA, to provide that foundation for your business technology platform and the intelligent enterprise. So like I said, um, back in Sapphire, and of course talking a lot about this week is SAP HANA Cloud Services. SAP HANA Cloud Services being the single gateway to, to all your trusted data. And actually what SAP HANA Cloud Services is, is a composite of various cloud services that, that make this up, that are simple, they're highly functional, scalable, and very integrated. Now I'll be talking just about HANA Cloud today, but the other pieces of HANA Cloud also include the SAP Analytics Cloud, which you're probably very familiar with, has been out for some time. Um, this is around our, our cloud-based uh, analytics, providing BI, planning, predictive, in a, in a very a single, very powerful solution. Also being embedded in our line of business applications, line of business cloud apps as well. And then of course, SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, which um, was, was announced and shown at Sapphire, talked a lot about this week as well. This is our next generation data warehouse, really geared towards the business persona type person that that combines data management and advanced analytics all together. And these all run on the SAP HANA Cloud, which we'll get into more detail in some of the patterns. But the, the beauty of this is that these are very highly integrated solutions. Um, you can use them all together or just one. And in the case of the Data Warehouse Cloud, which is, which is really great, is that it leverages SAP HANA Cloud natively behind the scenes. So when you provision Data Warehouse Cloud, you don't, you don't have to worry about acquiring or provisioning HANA Cloud. It actually inherits all the capabilities that come with it. So you don't have to worry about having to do that. It's all, all the services are provisioned behind the scenes. And again, the idea here is simplicity, um, being, being elasticity, cloud economics, um, and providing that single gateway to all your trusted data. Now, a little bit about HANA, and some of you uh, here had mentioned that you, you have HANA today or that you're familiar with it and, or, or have used it. Um, I, I think just a, a little bit of a, of a rewind and talk about the HANA journey, kind of where we came from, where we are, and where we're going to put SAP HANA Cloud in perspective. Um, so first of all, HANA has been out for about 10 years now, um, and you know, I, I was actually here at TechEd uh, eight, nine years ago in the very early days of HANA talking to customers about, about HANA. In those days, it was explaining to people you know, even what an in-memory database was, you know, why you would need it, uh, what columnar was or columnar rows, uh, row stores, columnar compression, what the advantage and how revolutionary OLAP and OLTP was, being able to transact and analyze on the same set of data. So, you know, see some of you nodding your head, you probably may have been some of my sessions back then. You know, fast forward to now, and it's been an incredible journey where, you know, what started as just a sidecar accelerator for performance with an, an all-in-memory platform, then turned into running business suite and S4 and BW and BW4, becoming a real general purpose platform, not just for SAP use cases, but also for non-SAP use cases. You know, 30,000 customers later, and that's how many customers we have with SAP HANA, 
since the inception. Uh, many organizations are using uh, HANA for both, um, for both SAP workloads, non-SAP workloads, for custom data warehouses, uh, non-SAP apps, custom apps. Uh, we even have some customers that are running their business suite and their GIS systems together, you know, all on HANA. And as we've gone through, obviously there's been a myriad of innovations as, as HANA's progressed throughout the years, both on-premises, hybrid, and then in the cloud. Um, and so we're still making innovations with the on-premises version of HANA. So for example, the recent announcements like with Intel Optane, the new Optane chips, which allow for a faster restart up to 12 times faster in terms of recovery and um, over three terabytes of data on the chip. So basically a lower total cost of ownership. HANA isn't new to the cloud, so this isn't the first foray. We've always had the ability with HANA to deploy on other um, on hyperscalers. You can bring your own license, put it in AWS or Azure or Google or Ali Cloud. That's been around for quite a while. Um, also provide other capabilities and more recently with HANA as a service via SCP, a fully managed version of HANA. But really the next chapter of HANA is the HANA Cloud as part of the HANA Cloud services. So let me just spend some time real quick just to distill what HANA Cloud is so you have an understanding what, what the different components are, how it's differentiated. So first of all, HANA Cloud is a is the power and performance of HANA, the HANA that you know and, and I know and that we love. Uh, and all the advanced engines that come with it in the cloud. So fully scalable, elastic, uh, and being able to have the economics of the cloud in with HANA. Basically, it is a multi-cloud uh, experience. In other words, HANA cloud itself isn't the cloud environment. You have the ability to provision via S SCP, SAP cloud platform, and then deploy on the hyperscaler and data center of your choice. HANA Cloud is elastic, meaning that, as you know, in business, workload isn't just flat all the time, that you have peaks and valleys in terms of being of consumption, and you need to be able to consume as you need, use what you want, when you want, so full elastic experience. Also, it's fully managed by, by SAP, so this is, it is a database as a service, meaning that you know, SAP will is fully management managing it. It's doing the backup. It's doing the recovery, uh, the patches, and things like that. We're keeping the lights on, and of course, you're doing all the the value add, the fun stuff, creating those those applications and things along those lines. And it's also flexible consumption, being able to consume as you want, whether that's you know upfront subscriptions or consumption based. Um, but the idea is that. It's a new experience in terms of consuming and using HANA. Now, a couple of new things that are also part of HANA, HANA Cloud is that it's not just this in-memory database that, that we've put in the cloud. It's purpose-built for the cloud, the next generation. And what we've done is we've actually have multiple engines and storage capabilities within HANA Cloud through one seamless veneer that you can look at. And so what I mean by that is, is that, yes, we have HANA, but then we also have disk store based on the native storage extension capability. If you're not familiar with native storage extension, this actually came with HANA 2 SPS04 recently. This is a very tightly coupled, warm disk-based storage capability that's, that's integrated very tightly with the HANA engine and managed by HANA. And then also, what's really cool here, is a relational data lake what we call the HANA relational data lake. So we're not just talking about terabytes of data in HANA Cloud, we're now talking about petabytes of data in HANA Cloud that's stored in a columnar, uh, in a columnar way for high, uh, high performance analytics. Also what we've done with HANA Cloud in terms of consumption is we've actually split up store, storage and compute. So in other words, you now have the ability to uh, determine how much storage you need for the data, and then also how much compute power that you need. And we've also come up with a new metric in terms of commercialization that's very interesting and very flexible using these different storage and, and compute uh, capabilities. These include what we call a HANA capacity unit. And the idea is that this HANA capacity unit just costs one thing. And then what you're able to do is then put that, you're able to apply 
the amount of resources you want depending upon how much storage you want, whether you want that to be in a, in a petabyte store or whether you want that in memory, uh, how much compute you want for in memory versus, uh, versus the relational data lake. So you're able to move around um, or not to make a pun here, but since we're in Vegas, kind of put your chips on the poker table where you want to have the processing done. And so it's a very flexible way to consume. And then you can move the data to the different stores as you need. And one of the key things about this as well is the virtualization. One of the strengths of HANA has always been the virtualization capability or what we call federation. The ability to use what's called smart data access to be able to connect out to other data sources. And this continues with the HANA cloud. And the idea is, is that you're able to connect to um, not, not just what's, what's in memory or to the relational data lake that's within what's in the HANA cloud, but to, to other sources like Hadoop, uh, Oracle Cloud, AWS, S3, et cetera, all these different data stores. And the, the idea is that as a part of this, there's um, you know, query log logging and optimization, SQL optimization, to try to push as much processing into these different engines, just fetch the results at query execution time. And basically, what you're creating is a virtual table within HANA Cloud that can bring all this information together. So a very, uh, very powerful and compelling capability. And of course, like I mentioned, the use cases or the, the tools that can consume them vary, everything from you know, analytics like SAP Analytics Cloud, the Data Warehouse Cloud, which natively basically takes advantage of all those capabilities I just mentioned. Uh, data intelligence applications, third-party applications, so this includes third-party vendors that have created solutions, and custom solutions as well. And also, uh, I think it goes without mention here that, and certainly as we show the bottom with application data and cloud sources and other data sources, uh, our, our main goal with all of this is to preserve existing investments, because like I mentioned, we know many customers are starting with an on-premises environment that may be running a data warehouse or maybe running S4 or BW or running a custom app as well. And so the, the anticipation here and the expectation is to be able to use HANA Cloud to help extend, to help customers on their path and journey you know, to the cloud. You're not a forced march. And so that, that existing investment, our goal, like I said, and our commitment is to help you realize and exploit and leverage your existing uh, investment both now and in the future. So to wrap up with HANA Cloud, a couple key things. Remember one, Unlimited, the idea here is that basically the ability to connect to really any data source of any data type, whether that's trans transactional or analytical, structured or unstructured, whether it's on-premise in the cloud. Trusted, the idea is that the business users know that the information is connected, it's timely, it's governed, so they know the, so they know the decisions they're making are credible, simple, because now you have a, a single veneer to manage all these different types of data, all these different types of connections based on your cost performance requirements. And then also open. Uh, you know, one of the, the key aspects I always try to make is that you know, HANA, even HANA on-premises and HANA Cloud for that matter, is an open general purpose data platform. So not just for SAP solutions. We have many customers that are using it for custom you know, data warehouses, innovative solutions using the advanced engines of HANA like predictive or machine learning or spatial and being, being able to bring that all together and, and custom solutions as well. So let's talk a little bit about some of the, the use cases and, and patterns of SAP uh, Cloud. Again, m my goal here is to really make this as simple and, and relevant and meaningful as possible in terms of these patterns. So there's three of them that I, I want to talk about with you. First is the expansion of your on-premise landscape to the cloud. And the idea here is to help get you started and accelerate your journey to the cloud. So the idea is, again, starting with your on-premises systems that are on the right-hand side that would manifest themselves as other databases, uh, an SAP HANA system, your ECC systems, your BW4 systems, your S4 systems, uh, even your GIS systems or, or other such systems, and being able to burst or be able to, if you have excess or you need more capacity, more compute capability, being able to then real-time replication, real-time replicate that information to the HANA cloud, which of course then you can leverage and exploit 
the translitical capabilities and HTAP capabilities of OLAP and OLTP, all, all the other various engines and running uh, multiple applications on that. And this is actually probably the most straightforward approach in terms of replicating data out. Of course, very easy to set up, a low TCO, spin it up, you know, shut it down. Uh, again, great to scale for, uh, to the cloud for on-demand environments, especially for like test and dev. In fact, um, many of the use cases, many times people are using in the cloud is to use that cloud environment as a testing scenario before you perhaps even propagating it to on-premises. Again, this, and this covers that bursting capability, being able to cover peak workloads um, in a very effective and, and cost-effective and efficient way um, as, as you see fit if you've, if you've overextended the on-premises systems. Um, also making use of the latest innovations of HANA Cloud. Like I mentioned, not just HANA in memory, but also the disk, the data lake, and all those, all those pieces. And then also, um, this is a great way to start your cloud migration path in terms of getting them into the HANA Cloud. And of course then, the, the way to consume this could be custom solutions, uh, analytics, BI tools, SAP Analytics Cloud, and the SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. So this is a, a really great first step, what I'll call the expand or extend your on-premises landscape. The second is, is more what I'll call the, the data virtualization approach. Again, not necessarily new to Han on-premise, but certainly in the cloud, very, very compelling, uh, especially just from a, a TCO perspective. The idea is using a virtual data fabric table that can connect to various data sources that could be in the cloud, that could be on-premise. Um, these could be uh, larger systems in the cloud like IoT data, um, other like geospatial imagery data, uh, documents, doc stores, uh, the Hadoop systems and things like that. And again, we see this very commonly with data virtualization where you don't necessarily want to bring back terabytes or petabytes of data you want to leave that data where it is, try to push the processing into that, into that other system and just fetch the results that you want at query execution time, bring that back and merge that with other data. And the key here is leveraging a capability of, uh, with a virtual, uh, or fabric virtual tables to be able to do that. And again, this is probably the most easy way to do it. Again, not really requiring any replication it's simply an IP address, perhaps a login and password. But again, there's a lot happening behind the scenes in terms of SQL op optimization, query logging to understand the performance of the system and optimizing it. But it's great because it is a single view that's kind of tying everything together real time. So it's gonna be fetching data you know, uh, basically at query execution time. You, you can set up caching parameters and rules, but for the most part, it's, it's a real time um, uh, connection. And again, the benefit of it is not having to set up perhaps a laborious data move and replication. And usually, and, and I'm sure you're aware of this, is that you know, this virtualization is only going to be as fast as the weakest link in the chain. So in terms of when you're querying another system, it's only gonna be as fast as, as the slowest system that's gonna respond. So there's certainly an SLA aspect to it. So, this, so many may employ a combination of this, and I'll show you what that looks like in terms of tying these all together. But the idea is, is that um, virtualization provides a good starting point, but then again, as your SLAs may need to increase, you may consider using other techniques to bring that data closer, uh, whether that's in memory or on disk or in the, or in the petabyte uh, relational data lake. And again, secure access, you know, encrypted, being able to connect. And again, the, and if you've noticed the the consumption on the left in terms of apps and BI clients, Index Cloud and the Data Warehouse Cloud really haven't changed, it's still, still there. So this is a great way, again, of a single access layer to all data um, and really to maximize the data investment. And finally, uh, centrally store and manage your data with your own data lake. So now that you have you know, a data lake service, your know, petabyte scale relational data lake service, um, and, you, and you do have SLAs and you wanna bring that closer to your enterprise data or combine that with enterprise data, this is a great option. Again, the, the relational data lake we have 
is managed through a, sing a single veneer for HANA Cloud that you can automatically provision and manage and see the, and, and see the data. High ingestion rates, um, the, the ability to very highly optimized uh, smart data access capability to then uh, query that information. And again, it's a, the built-in data lake, very easy to manage with that, with that single veneer. Uh, very scalable, a centralized data store, because in this case, bringing this together, being able to take your existing uh, enterprise data or other data and then enriching that with um, other third-party data. That could be uh, spatial data, it could be machine data or IoT device data. Uh, social data, basically unstructured data as well. Uh, very fast data access and querying processing time because it's it's resonant within the HANA cloud, uh, secure, and again, a, a low total cost, cost of ownership because again, you're having the ability to define uh, which uh, compute and storage capabilities you want to leverage within HANA Cloud, whether that's in memory or the disk or the data lake. So this, this data enrichment supports that for a centrally stored uh, data to manage within your own data lake. So pulling this all together, uh, when I went through the different patterns, the idea wasn't necessarily that um, you, you would use just one. And this is the same with HANA today, that many are employing these various patterns leveraging HANA Cloud in terms of being able to have that single gateway to data. Some of it will include real-time replication um, with your on-premises systems, like with SAP HANA or S4 or other data sources, that could be a replication into HANA that then can go into the in-memory engine um, or the disk store or the relational data lake or virtualization from these on-premise systems and then also virtualization replication from these other cloud environments as well, social media, geospatial data, and data lake data as well. The key here is that you have options and flexibility, so it isn't just a, you have to choose just one path. We see a combination of them depending upon, again, your cost and performance requirements, customer SLAs, you know, things along those lines. But this makes for a very compelling, very easy way to get started with HANA and HANA Cloud in this environment, especially piggybacking off of existing on-premises investments. And again, this, then what can consume this can be the data warehouse cloud, which can automatically and seamlessly leverage all the capabilities I just mentioned th through that particular software as a service, analytics cloud, third party and custom applications as well, you know, all leveraging this. And again, the, the key here is being elastic, multi-cloud, easy consumption, all managed by SAP as well. So what's next? Uh, like I said, this, this is actually a product, HANA Cloud, that has not uh, released yet. So actually, we're planning on general availability later this year in Q4. Uh, we're working with customers right now on some early adopters uh, with, with HANA Cloud. So look for more announcements on HANA Cloud. I know certainly at, uh, at Tech Ed Barcelona will be making announcements about HANA Cloud. And then also in early Q1 2020, uh, customers will have availability, availability for trial accounts. But I'd also encourage you to get started now if you're, not, if you're not familiar with HANA in the cloud or HANA as a service, that's something you can get started with today via SCP, uh, being able to spin up uh, HANA as a service and, and basically uh, HANA cloud being a successor to HANA as a service will provide a, a seamless migration path to that as well when that time comes. And of course, being a cloud environment, um, going to have frequent updates and releases and continuous innovation. So a lot of the exciting innovations, um, not just with the engines I spoke about, but you can imagine other services and engines that will also be brought to the HANA cloud as well. Um, it, it basically, pr since we're now in a cloud environment and not on-premises, uh, it's much more flexible in terms of adding these various services that you can choose. And again, leveraging your HANA capacity and it's to then choose which of those services you wanna use. So just to wrap up, again, appreciate your time today. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding some of the, the patterns at a, at a high level. And then also there's some, some other tech ed sessions definitely would recommend you take a look at. I appreciate your time today. And with that, thank you very much.